Hi friends, welcome to another week of fascinating AI news that caught my eye. Let's start with two robotic projects. Researchers from Meta and CMU released RoboAgent, a universal multitask agent, which shows 12 skills across 38 tasks and can generalize to hundreds of unseen scenarios. Unitree released a general purpose humanoid robot priced below 90k, which is a really good price for this impressive robot. This is my first time hearing about this company. It's a Chinese company founded in 2016. They offer various kinds of robots used in inspection, fire, and rescue, and they were showcased in Winter Olympics and Super Bowl. OpenAI acquired Global Illumination. This startup is working on an open-source Minecraft game. The key feature is that you can build and play games right there from your browser, no installation needed. It's possible that OpenAI will build an AI simulation platform for generative agents to explore the game, like the Stanford Generative Agents Project, or maybe it's a sign that OpenAI will invest more in visual products and services. And finally, three papers and open-source projects. Platypus, a new family of large language models that achieves the strongest performance and ranks number one in HuggyFace Open LLM leaderboard. It is impressively compute efficient. A 13 billion parameter model can be trained on a single A100 GPU using 25,000 questions in just five hours. The secret of their high performance lies in their curated data sets, their effort in checking for test data leaks and contamination in the training data, and their fine-tuning and merging LoRa modules. They open-sourced the curated data sets OpenPlatypus, which is a subset of the other open data sets shown in this table. They identified and removed three types of contaminated questions, duplicate, gray area, and similar but different. The duplicate contamination question are essentially exact copies of questions found in the test sets. The gray area contamination questions are not exact duplicates but fall within the realm of general knowledge, for example, when the answers are synonymous. The similar but different contamination questions are questions with high cosine similarity scores but with different answers, for example, when the question structure is different. In the fine-tuning and merging process, they used LoRa, PEFT, and Transformers, focused on the attention modules and other modules in the fine-tuning process. The second paper highlights not only the importance of good data quality, but also the scalability of building the dataset. They introduced a method called instruction back translation, where LLMs can leverage large amount of unlabeled data to create high-quality instruction tuning dataset. Here are the steps. Step one is self-augmentation, which means that we have some unlabeled data and we want to generate the instructions for those unlabeled data. In other words, we treat the unlabeled data as the answers and we are predicting the instructions. This is backwards from our normal chat models, where we give instruction and it will generate answers. So in order to do this backwards, we first fine tune a llama model with the seed data flipped where the answer is input and the instruction is output. The result model output is the augmented data, but not all augmented data is good and usable. So in step two, self-curation, we select high quality augmented data with this prompt. Below is an instruction from a user and a candidate answer. Evaluate whether or not the answer is a good example of how AI assistant would respond to the user's instruction. Please assign a score using the following five-point scale. One, it means the answer is complete. Two, the answer addressed most of the asks from the user. Three, it means the answer is helpful but not written by an AI assistant. Address the basic asks from the user. Four, the answer is written from an assistant perspective with a clear focus of addressing the instruction. Five, it is a perfect answer from an AI assistant. So this step will select higher quality data for us, and then we can do self-training to improve the model. After just two iterations, the researchers got an improved model. They named it Humpback, which outperforms all the other models that don't distill from more powerful models. This final project, Sketch a Sketch, is really fun. Give it a prompt, sketch a few strokes, and it will generate a really nice image for you. 
this is an exciting project because previous sketch to image tools typically require a complete sketch and don't work with partial sketches. To solve this problem, this project created their own data set of partial sketches. They convert an image to a rasterized edge map, vectorize the edge map into a collection of strokes, and randomly delete a fraction of the strokes. Then they train a control net model that takes a text caption and a partial stroke as inputs and outputs images. It's really nice the author has created a notebook for us to play with the model. Here I was trying to sketch a house and a tree and in the prompt I typed a dreamy house in the forest and the resulting images are really nice and realistic. What do you think? Yeah, so that's it for the week. Please let me know if I missed anything. See you next time. Bye!